Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Red Hat Summit 2016. Brought to you by Red Hat. Here's your host, Brian Gracely. Welcome back to Red Hat Summit. We're here in San Francisco, Red Hat Summit 2016. 5,500 people here on day two. Excited to have Todd Mancini, Harry Maurer from the app development team. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Um, so, you know, one of the big parts of, of Red Hat Summit now is, is Dev Nation, the application development piece of it, attracting developers. You guys are a huge part of that. Give us, you know, we've been covering you know, day one and day two. Dev Nation was sort of pre-show. Mm -hmm. Give us the, the highlights. What went on? What were, you, uh, what were you communicating? What did the community look like? Yeah, sure. So we started the day with, we had a, the morning keynote uh, where we made a number of announcements. It was probably, I think, one of the largest single day announcements that we've had, especially from the developer tools uh, yeah. group. Um, and then, you know, this is our third year and, you know, it's been getting bigger and better. I think this year we had uh, over 50 speakers and 60 sessions and 70 hours of content. So wow. it was one of our best uh, dev nations yet. We made a, you know, it was pretty good. Yeah, let's do a real quick rundown. What were the big announcements and what are the areas of, of applications they hit? Yeah, sure, so we made a number of announcements. There was really two areas. It was uh, announcements around uh, technology that we've been committed to for many years. And so we, the first section was we made uh, announcements around um, support for OpenJDK on Windows, um, a new type of um, uh, evolution of enterprise Java with a microprofile um, announcement. Um, and we also announced some new products like Dev Suite and Dev Studio, and if you want to talk about those. Sure, so one of the uh, products that we announced that we, we didn't actually get a chance to talk about much because we were kind of running out of time was um, Red Hat Development Suite. Okay. And this is, a, this is a brand new product, and what it actually does is it takes all of our other developer tools and kind of puts them in one package. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can install it super easy, um, and it, it doesn't only make it easier to install them, but it integrates them all together, so they work seamlessly together. So it's, okay. I think it's going to make experience for developers. So I'm no longer bouncing between tabs, it's just a, a right click or something is just going to get pulled in and Correct. one experience, sort of one ID, excellent. Yeah. And then the other couple things, uh, .NET Core, now, now yep. open source, part of, uh, part of RHEL, part of OpenShift. Yep. How, you guys both have some background at Microsoft. How big a deal is that? What, what does it's, that mean to the market? It's, it's huge, I mean, from my perspective, I, I've been at Red Hat about a year and a half and I had left Microsoft. I'd a long time at Microsoft, and I thought I had left that world, and that world seems to have followed me here. <laughs> so it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. But it was a huge announcement for us, and it was actually part of that second wave of announcements. You know, the kind of the future moving forward for Red Hat in the development space. And um, you know, we were really excited. We had Scott Hanselman uh, from Microsoft uh, do the announcement and do the demos along with Todd. And uh, you know, it's great because we're the first uh, Linux provider to actually have a fully supported version of .NET. So if you're a .NET developer and you want to do it on Windows or you want to do it on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you're going to get the same level of support. And um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, fantastic. Right, and I, I got to imagine, I mean, we had uh, Paul Cormier on was talking about Linux and containers. This is going to make it easier to take advantage of those environments, take advantage of microservices. And yep, and um, we showed some other demos of some tools that we're starting to get uh, more integrated with. Uh, there's some upstream projects, uh, one in particular, Eclipse Che. Uh, which is really a container-based development environment, and um, you know Todd did some demos with uh, Tyler Jewell from Code Envy around that. I mean, okay. do you want to talk more about Che at all? Yeah, so Che is um, it's it's really unique in its in its approach to how a developer actually even gets started. It's completely browser-based, right? Okay. So you're you don't need to install anything. You can be up and running instantly. But where it kind of goes even further is. Most developer tools, you know, they, they, they refer to themselves as an integrated development environment. But really, they're integrated development tools. They don't really provide the environment. Che goes further and really does have this notion of these universal workspaces. Yeah. So that not only can you start coding, but you have an environment in which to code, a containerized-based environment. Okay. That includes a full stack of, of your application platform in it. So it's, it's really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it's a huge piece. I mean, we, we talk to a lot of customers, and a lot of CIOs are saying, hey, look, I'm seeing all these things happen in the marketplace, and Uber's going fast, and Airbnb, and we mm -hmm. want to go fast, and then they go, how do I go fast? Right? Right. How do I, you know, writing code isn't, uh, it's, getting, it's getting easier, more people are doing it, but you know, those big steps that you're making are going to make it easier and easier, and mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the, one of the things that uh, we, we heard was sort of citizen developer, and, and, mm -hmm. and this idea that more and more people that aren't hardcore coders can help 
you know, make a, make you know an input into that. Yeah, and, and I think Che plays a lot into that. That's why it's going to be a big part of our strategy because you know one of the biggest pain points is just getting started, yeah. right? It's just setting up your local environment. It's getting everything you need to get running. Uh, you know, it, moving to this type of technology alleviates almost all of that, yeah. and so, uh, so it's really big it's for get, us. It's getting taking the friction from sort of idea to execution in yep. terms of or at that, least yeah. getting idea to hey, let me test out my idea and right. see what it looks like. Right. You know, and also part of that too is you know Che is really great because. Along with that, developers are using more and more different types of technologies and languages. Yeah. And um, so Che supports a wide, will support a wide range of languages because we also uh, made an announcement with Microsoft around a, a language server protocol which allows language developers to create uh, standard implementations of their language capabilities that can be plugged into both our development tools as well as Microsoft's development tools. Okay. And um, I think that's really exciting because as new languages and technologies come online, they can easily find a home in these development tools and people okay. can build their So is, is that about sort of making a consistent experience for a Linux developer and a Windows developer, or is that a Go developer and a Java developer? What, what does that mean in reality? Yeah, I so think I, it's, yeah. I, would, I would actually say it's not about making it be consistent. It's actually about making it so you have that choice. Okay. Right? If we, if we made it consistent, then all the tools would be the same and why why bother, right? Yeah. But the idea here is you get to choose your tool that okay. works the way that you prefer, but you don't have to abandon the languages you want to use. Gotcha. So in Shea, if you want to do C sharp .NET development, you can. If you want to do Java development, you can. Yeah. Same on the Visual Studio side. It gives you the option to now and use these languages. And then you guys deal with the ugly plumbing behind the scenes to make it to make it simple and frictionless. All yeah. sorts of ugly plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, one of the guys in your team uh, ran the demo today. Yeah. A huge demo. Yeah. Uh, in terms of in terms of breadth, we had you know front end development, we had mobile development, we had reactive environments. Give us a sense of what what did we see? What was all, what all was going on there? Yeah, we call Burr the demo magician because it really is a magic act up there. I mean, you saw. What you saw was someone take code, an idea, code it, and bring it all the way through an automated process out to production. Right. Um, you actually, you know, for those that weren't there, it was, a, we should, it was based around a, a mobile game, so everyone would, had a chance to actually play the game. And while, in, in, during the people playing the game, we were actually making real-time changes as it was happening, and you yeah. could see it all uh, go through the pipeline up on stage. And everyone asks, you know, how much of that was fake and how much was real? It's always all real. I mean, yeah. that's, that's the amazing thing about those demos every year. No net. Everything without a net, yeah. Everything without a net. And I think that the big thing that the people don't always understand is, you know, you talk about those changes. Those changes could be based on a lot of things. They could be based on, you know, planned code changes. They could be based on, you know, user input that people yeah. are going like, oh, you know, the, everybody's using it this way. Let's make a change. Maybe you want to introduce an ad, an ad component to it. You want to introduce a new payment system. Mm -hmm. People have to be able to change those on the fly. The, yeah. the six month, you know, outage window is no longer part of business anymore. No, and actually part of what we showed, and I don't even want to talk more about this, but we showed the different types of deployment strategies, how you could do either, you know, take the new stuff and just make it 100% of the deployment, or we showed something called a canary deploy, where you only uh, deploy to a percentage of the audience in real time, and you test to see if there's any issues, yeah. and if there's no issues, then it automatically go to the, you know, to the rest of the users. And so, yeah. you know, all sorts of feedback happens in real time to make uh, deployment decisions, and that's right. what we're trying to show. Sometimes today. they call those blue-green deployments, yeah, blue -green. or retail yeah. people call them AB types of testing yeah. and so Correct. forth. Exactly. And, and the capabilities now are, you know, integrate continuous integration, integrate containers so that it's easier for developers, and uh, that part was was very very interesting to be able to say, look, we all talk about these big, you know, kind of PowerPoint slides, and here's what's going on. You guys really showed the breadth of that, and what was really interesting was. All of that is, is, is Red Hat innovation, Red Hat technology, and then, and then open source technology as well throughout, yeah. the, throughout the thing. Yeah, if you looked at the different technologies we use, we use the mix of production, you know, the products that we, we offer support for, as well as some new upstream uh, projects right. like Vertex. And right. the, from the container perspective, I thought it was really neat how we showed Che, you know, everything that when, when um, Joshua, the first person who was doing the coding, we actually opened up his development environment, it was the same container-based environment that the production people were using. And as a matter of fact, it was the production people that, that gave that to Joshua, right? It was no longer, I did have to worry about my local environment being mismatched from production. And yeah. that's, a, that's a huge problem today. Yeah, to I mean, I think the thing, I, the big thing I took away from it was, it's sort of like you said, uh, as a developer, I didn't have to really change anything. I'm going to write in whatever framework or language I like, but that consistency of environment went mm -hmm. from the laptop to the testing environment to production, could be running in the public cloud, could be running in, in private cloud. I mean, that's a huge change, right? You, mm -hmm. you no longer have to, you know, it's less finger pointing, less sort of, you know, coordination, it just sort of works. Yeah, I mean, part of that, I mean, I don't know if you want to talk about that, the, uh, 
that was a mix of technologies across micros, all those different microservices. Yeah. And it wasn't just one static monolith, uh, you know, Java all the way through. It was actually a bunch of different technologies. Yeah. What was your, what, what's been your big takeaway so far this week from, from developers that you've talked to, feedback they're giving you, things they still want to see Red Hat work on? Wow, there's been a lot. The, um, some of the announcements I think that surprised us that got, you know, people really jazzed up. The, the fact that the, we have an open JDK now available on Windows that yeah. has the breadth of support of, of, of Red Hat behind it, that people were blown away by that and that they were super excited about it because it really helps them address a really fundamental issue. We talk about this issue of, hey, is development the same as production? Mm -hmm. And then the, the reality is for a lot of um, applications being written today, say in Java, it is fairly common for a developer's desktop to be a uh, Windows machine, because sure. they're, they're, they're in an enterprise, enterprises deployed Windows you know, yep. out to the desktops. But there was always a concern that, well, what if the JDK that I'm running on my desktop environment is different than the one that's in production? Are they going to behave the same? How do I know that? Right, right. And so Red Hat now is addressing that with our distribution of the open JDK. It okay. gives you that guaranteed consistency between the Windows and Rail installation. Yeah. So, that, so that it runs on my desk, on my laptop thing is not just it's in a Docker container. It's also the framework, the runtime. You got to have a, yeah, a level absolutely. of consistency of that whole stack. Yeah I, mean, yeah, I mean, containers are really exciting, and they're the new thing. And developers will start to use them more as we progress. But today, you know, it's it's a small percentage that are actually doing development in containers. And we still have to worry about that local experience. Yeah. yeah. So, I'll give you guys the last word. Each one of you, sort of, what's the what's the takeaway you want people who maybe aren't here at the show to go? If I'm if I'm interested in app development, if I'm interested in just open development, mm -hmm. uh, what should they look for from you guys? What's, what's on the horizon maybe that they should be you know, kind of getting excited about? Well, the first thing I'd ask them to do is go to our developer program, developers.redhat.com. Come to the site, register. Uh, all the products are available for you to use for free for development use and you know, get started. Um, I think the big takeaway for, or the, the big message that we were trying to give developers uh, this week, at, at least through DevNation, was you know, we're really committed to the technologies that you're using today and we're going to be supporting you throughout no matter how you use them. But we're also looking at ways to they can bring you into the future and be more productive in these new, this new world of uh, microservices, containers, and, and you know, cloud environment. Yeah. And I just add that you know, we're an open by default organization. Um, we really highlighted some of the stuff that we're delivering today, but yeah. we've got tons of new stuff that we're working on. And if people come to developers.redhat.com, they can find out about it and not only find out about it, but start to contribute and get engaged in it. So we, we look forward to that. Yeah, no, that's, that's great, guys. I, you know, Todd, uh, Harry, you know, 10 years of, of application development here at, at Red Hat Summit, a lot of new things coming out. Uh, Linux and Windows kind of working together, uh, all open source, you know, open application development across the cloud. Uh, with that, we're going to be right back. We'll be back all week and uh, all day today on day two here at the, at the Red Hat Summit 2016 here in San Francisco. This is theCUBE.